Layered virtualization enables you to deploy and manage Oracle Solaris non-global zones within Oracle VM Server for Spark logical domains. Using zones this way enables you to isolate your applications. For example, you can run different versions of an application in each zone, or run different applications in each zone. When you need to update the operating system for a zone, you need only to consider compatibility with one application versus many. A simple layered virtual environment in Ops Center consists of an enterprise controller, a proxy controller, a discovered and managed Oracle VM server for Spark virtualization server, a logical domain on the virtualization server, a non-global zone within the logical domain, storage resources, and at least one network. The enterprise controller must be running Oracle Solaris 11 and have its Oracle Solaris 11 software update library synchronizing with an Oracle Solaris 11 image packaging system. When you create a non-global zone, OpCenter installs it from the Oracle Solaris 11 software update library using the default software group named Solaris Small Server. This group uses less space than when you install from an operating system image. The virtualization server must be provisioned as an Oracle VM server for Spark control domain with an Oracle Solaris 11 Update 1 operating system. It must also be running version 3.1 of the LDOM management software, which gets installed during provisioning. Any logical domains that you create on the virtualization server must also be provisioned with an Oracle Solaris 11 Update 1 operating system. The logical domain's operating system acts as a global zone. For storage, you'll need to consider how you want to store the operating system and metadata for both the logical domain and the non-global zone. For the operating systems, you can use Network Attached Storage, also known as NAS, Static or Dynamic SAN Storage, which are Fiber Channel or iSCSI LUN disks, Virtual Disks exported from another service domain, which are referred to as local devices in the Ops Center interface, and the local file system. For an I.O. or root domain, you can also use direct I.O. disks belonging to the I.O. or root domain. For the metadata, you can use NAS storage or the local file system. For networking, you can use one or more networks for the logical domain and non-global zones. One of the advantages of layered virtualization is that you can put each zone on its own network, therefore adding a strong layer of security. Now let's talk about two agents that control the layered virtualization interface in Ops Center. First is the Oracle VM Server for Spark virtualization controller agent, which resides on a control domain. It enables you to create, manage, and monitor logical domains, including I.O. and root domains. Second is the Zones Virtualization Controller agent, which is automatically installed on a logical domain during its provisioning. It enables you to create, manage, and monitor non-global zones running within the logical domain. Suppose a virtualization server has direct access to SAN and NAS storage. It's directly connected via fiber channel to a SAN storage device with LUNs and networked to a network file server for shared storage. On the virtualization server, Solaris I.O. multipathing is enabled so that OpCenter can see and use the LUNs for its SAN storage libraries. When a virtualization server is provisioned as a control domain, OpCenter creates a virtual disk server on it. When you create a logical domain that uses a LUN, the virtual disk server creates a virtual disk on the logical domain to provide that domain with indirect access to the LUN you select. The virtual disk is listed in the Ops Center user interface as a local device for the logical domain. When you create a zone within a logical domain and want to use a LUN, you first need to add storage to the logical domain. The Add Storage action allows you to select a LUN and then it creates a virtual disk on the logical domain. When you provision the zone, you select that LUN and Ops Center provides the zone indirect access to the LUN. Now let's take a look at a networking example. 
There are three types of virtual networking components that OpCenter uses to enable communication between the virtualization server, the logical domain, and the non-global zone. The first is a virtual network switch. When you assign a network to a virtualization server, OpCenter creates a virtual switch for that network on a selected service domain on the virtualization server, for example, on a control domain. At that time, you can also specify an IP address for the service domain. The second device is a virtual network device, or VNet. When you connect a network to a logical domain, say for example a guest domain, the service domain's virtual switch creates a VNet on the logical domain. This action is the equivalent of plugging in a physical NIC on the guest and connecting a cable to it. OpCenter names the VNet as NetX, say for example Net0. Each VNet has exactly one port, and that port also has a name, for example, VNIC 5148803. You must then perform an attached network action on the guest to plumb an IP address on the VNet. After that, the virtual switch enables the guest to communicate with all the other guests on the same network. Most importantly, though, for layered virtualization, is that you must provision the guest with Solaris 11 Update 1 so that when you attach a network to a guest, OpCenter will also assign 10 alternate MAC addresses to the VNet's port. It is these MAC addresses that OpCenter will later assign to non-global zones within the guest. Lastly, the third device is a Virtual Network Interface Card, or VNIC, and it gets created on a non-global zone by a VNet during zone provisioning. During provisioning, you specify an IP address for the VNet's port, and OpCenter automatically assigns one of the alternate MAC addresses. That concludes this video. I'm Jody Glover. Thanks for watching.